Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great, as I always say. And in this video, we get more stories from pretty much everywhere. We got stories from Northern Alberta, Canada, from Pennsylvania, from Tennessee, and more. So, if that sounds like your cup of tea, then definitely pull up a stump, and let's jump into it. Thank you for watching. So this is a story that I like to tell. I was working in far northern Alberta, in Canada. The area where it is is literally a huge forest, and the only signs of civilization are oil or gas wells and plants. It's all muskeg in the forest area, and muskeg is just scary by itself. It's literally soft ground, decaying stuff in the forest that has grass growing on top of it. It can be immensely deep water, rotting plants and animals, but thick enough for grass to grow, and sometimes some small trees to even take root. It's basically Alberta's quicksand. Moose are known to venture out into this and then get stuck and drown. In areas like this, some of the wells can only be visited by most vehicles in the winter. Some are even more remote and can only be accessed by helicopter, even in the winter. I picked up a pretty sweet job in one of the helicopter runs. I was just doing maintenance and I did this for about two years. I want to stress that these locations are at least 300 to 400 kilometers away from any real civilization at this point. And traveling in these areas is very dangerous, not only because of animals, but stuff like the muskeg. So, one summer, my pilot lands us down. As we land, a guy exits at the little shack that's set up on the site. He looks pretty normal. He's really tattered and rough, but looks like a regular human being. He's fairly straight cut, and he has short black hair. He has a 5 o'clock shadow and is wearing an old Iron Maiden t-shirt that is way too large for him. He has regular blue jeans. He's walking towards the tree line. I yell out to him something like, Hey, what are you doing here? We can help you get home. He keeps walking towards the tree line. I yell out again, What the hell are you doing? How did you get out here? We can help you. The pilot even yells something like, We can cancel our run and get you to safety. He makes it to the tree line while we are yelling. He stops. And then he turns back and then his face kind of slips into a smile and then he darts off as fast as i've ever seen anybody run into the trees and disappeared into the forest no one at work believed us but it really stuck with me i don't know if it's really paranormal but it's definitely the weirdest thing i have ever experienced i just kind of want to know what he was doing out there everything in the shack was normal This happened a few years ago, when I lived in Tennessee. I was driving home from Memphis to Nashville. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. I was halfway home and I realized that I forgot to get gas. I take this exit with this scanned hope that I'll be able to find a gas station that's still open. So I'm driving, and about 10 miles down the road, I come up at a Sunoco gas station. I pull up to the pump, and I hear the ding ding. An attendant runs out from the garage and promptly begins fueling my car. I feel really confused since full service gas stations are very rare and one being opened this late is flat out weird. The attendant starts making small talk with me. I mention how odd it is that they're open at this time of the night. His demeanor changes from affable to kind of wary. Things get silent and awkward. He says, that'll be $19. I hand him my debit card, and he stares at it, puzzled. He says, what am I supposed to do with this? I explain I have no cash, and I only have a debit card. He just stares at me. Well, don't worry about it, I guess. This one's on the house. I thank him, and I get back on the highway. So, two weeks later... I'm passing through the area, and I get off at the same exit. 
I follow the road to where the gas station was, and I intend to pay for the gas that I got, and I thank him for being so helpful. But I pull into the lot, and the place is totally dilapidated. It looks like it's been abandoned for 30 years. I get super creeped out, and I head back for the highway. I had a family member that had a similar experience, but this was in South Dakota in the 1990s. It was very stormy that night. Lightning was illuminating what would have been a completely dark landscape. My father is driving out to visit his grandmother and help out on the farm. The storm gets fierce. He can't see good enough to drive. Unfortunately, he's still a ways from the farm, but he's also a good distance away from anything. Literally anything. It's just miles and miles of flat prairie. Through the heavy rain, lightning illuminates a windmill overlooking a small barn off to the right. My dad thanks his luck and pulls off on the road to take shelter from what he assumes is going to be a nasty hailstorm. He waits for lightning to illuminate the windmill again, and sure enough, there's a huge crack. He takes off for the shelter of the barn. Once he's inside the barn, he hunkers down. The storm gets worse. He ends up sleeping on the floor, safe from the hail storm erupting outside. The next morning, he leaves the barn and he sees that the car windows are all blown in by hail. Had he been in the car, he would have been taking a beating. He brushes the glass off the driver's seat and pushes on towards my grandmother's. He helps and whatever and talks to my grandmother about the barn. She says, what barn? He says, the one just west of here on the right side of the road, that one. And she says, oh, you must have been mistaken. There is nothing in that direction to Pierre. And sure thing, on the way back home, my dad passes where the barn was, where the barn should have been. And there's only a foundation that stands. He gets out to look, and all he finds is a few smashed pictures of a couple that are long dead, rotting in a pile of rubble. He did some research and found out that the owners of the barn died in 1956 when the barn collapsed in a snowstorm. So this happened a few years ago. I was driving through East Pennsylvania, and I'm giving this girl that I had just met at a friend's house a ride back to her place. Now, getting to her house involves going down a one-lane road that I had driven on at least a hundred times prior to this. At one section in the road, it meanders around a ridge by making a big right turn. Then, it does a sharp turn left after a couple hundred yards, and then right again, where these two logs are laying on the side of the road in kind of an X shape on the ground. It's a very distinctive landmark, at least for me. This, this is the way it always has been. So, there we are trying to find topics to talk about to keep the car ride from becoming awkward since we hardly know each other. We take a right turn around the bend, and then a sharp left turn, and then there's a left turn up ahead. Immediately, my body goes into fight-or-flight mode. I remember thinking, this isn't right. I know that there's a right turn here. This is not what's supposed to be here. We both fell dead silent and just looked ahead in confusion. The road about a hundred yards in front of me just turned left and disappeared off into the woods. To the right, there was nothing. Maybe a side hill and just some trees. It looked natural, not like a mirage or anything, yet it felt strange and almost intentionally deceptive. None of this made sense. I knew these roads. As we approached the turn, I decided just that I'm not going down that road and that something bad was going to happen. So I just made the irrational decision to turn right instead and hope for the best. The girl in the car put her hands on the dashboard to brace for impact. My eyes were still fixated down the left turn as I started steering to the right, and then as my gaze shifted towards the direction I was now driving in, suddenly I could see the correct road in front of me again, 
everything was back to normal. I looked in the rearview mirror, and sure enough, the left turning road was non-existent. My hands felt icy cold, and I was physically shaking. I pulled over to my right and just sat there in silence. We contemplated going back to investigate, but just looking at the road behind me gave me a sick feeling in my stomach. She said the same thing, that she felt sick and like everything was off for a little while there. We decided to just get the hell out of there and keep going, and that was that. I was very hesitant to go down that road again, and I avoided it the best I could after that. But after a few weeks or months later, I decided I had to go back in the daytime and check it out. I pulled over at the right turn spot. I got out of my car and I just walked around the area. This is the part that really freaks me out. I quickly found out that on the left side of the road, obscured by some thick underbrush, was a very steep, rocky cliff that dropped off maybe 200 to 250 feet down into a ravine. The phantom road would have taken me directly through a clearing and in between two trees that led straight over a cliff. If I had chosen not to follow my gut and drove down that road, there's a very good chance that we would have been seriously injured or killed. Apparently, several people have crashed in that area by driving down into a ravine. This might be just a coincidence, who knows? I don't know what to make of this event. If I were alone, I'd be more willing to write it off as a hallucination or a trick of the eye. But I wasn't alone. She saw the same thing I did, and I wasn't intoxicated. Although my passenger had been a little bit buzzed, but she was coming down from that too. I've never experienced anything out of the ordinary in my entire life other than this. Has anyone heard of something similar before? So I don't remember how old I was, but I just know that by the age of the house that I was living in, I had to be maybe four years old or so. So there's a hallway in this house that's small and it connects my parents' bedroom at one end and then the other end of the hall, it forks off into my room and my older sister's room. My sister's room is on the left. Her window overlooks the front yard slash driveway. My room is on the right, and it overlooks the backyard. So anyways, one night, it was super late, and I don't know what time it was, but it had to be some time in the middle of the night. I was terrified of these monsters that I'd see in my closet sometimes. But the story is not about monsters, so that's not where this is heading. I hear weird noises that were muffled. Before I heard the noises, I shot right up out of bed. Now... This never happened to me before, I'm only four years old, so waking up suddenly with no explanation in the middle of the night is something that I had never experienced. By the way, I know it's late because my parents usually stayed up late till like 1am and even they were asleep. So I run into my older sister's room and I yell, hey, wake up, I hear noises. And she says, F off, go back to bed. I ignore her and I look out the window and to the driveway. I see three beings standing around a massive object. At the time I thought it was like a spaceship because I was really young, but thinking back it was probably way too small to be a spaceship of any kind. It was only the size of a car or so, but I couldn't make out the details. There was three beings though. I scream at my sister. The Teletubbies are outside. She's like, what the hell do you mean? Dumbass Teletubbies aren't real. She had to be in sixth grade at this point. She gets up, comes to the window, and she says that she can't see what I'm seeing. She says, there's nothing there. Go back to sleep. Also, give me my Barbies back in the morning. And looking back, I'm thinking, oh, she knew that I played with Barbies. Oh, well, okay. So I stay in her room and I keep watching the three beings despite what she said. They looked up at me after I watched them for about 10 minutes. All their eyes were black with white centers. I got freaked out and I ran to get my sister again. 
after she's like go back to bed and when she looked out the window this time she could see them too i said see and i darted to the front door i got scared and started crying and we went to get our parents to show them what was going on but when we looked out the window with our parents they saw nothing i'm so confused and it's a memory that i carry from my childhood so vividly that i'll never understand teletubbies like really i'm thinking that they had to be some kind of aliens or something because i call them teletubbies even if that's the only association that i could have with them i don't know i just carry that with me what do you think So I'm from Germany, and we have lots of stories about doppelgangers. I don't know if it's the same as some of the other stories that people tell, but it's just what we call it. Anyways, I live in South Germany near the forest of Scharswald. I've been camping there since I was a child, with friends and their families. We usually annually go there, or maybe every second year or so. Here and there, I remember our parents being kind of worried about something, but it was never something big. Sometimes there were weird voices in the forest, but hey, it's not a city after all. Now I'm 21, and we still go camping there, nowadays, without our parents though. Last year, I had a creepy encounter that I want to tell you about. So we go to our usual campsite, there's four of us. We set up our camps on the same place. We're pumped up because everyone's always looking forward to this event. We celebrate the first night at the campfire with alcohol. One buddy stumbles away to take a pee. He's one of those men that can't pee with others around him so he has to go deep into the woods. He comes back talking about some other campfire. We laugh at him and assume that he just saw ours from afar and blame it on the alcohol and he's convinced of it like oh yeah i guess so guys eventually we take care of the fire and go to sleep and we're absolutely hammered a wonderful morning with a headache follows and a peaceful night we enjoy our stay and we go swimming in a river nearby we get back to our camp and one friend hurries out of his tent someone went through his backpack his stuff is spread out all over his sleeping bag. His shirt and his phone are missing. We go to check the tent and I find that my backpack has been emptied too. I get alarmed and assume a thief. Everyone searches that for their valuable goods, such as expensive lights, money, and phones. Everything is there. It's only the friend's shirt and phone that's missing. We decide to look for footprints and find a trail in the coal leading into the woods. There's no boot prints, it's just bare feet. And I think this is weird, but okay. All of us decide not to stay there and we pack our stuff. We take some time to get the equipment back in our cars. And suddenly, my other friend's phone starts to ring. And he says, guys... You should see this. We run up to see that whoever is calling, they're calling from the stolen phone. The friend whose phone was stolen gets angry, takes the phone and answers. He says, listen, that's not funny, you... He stops abruptly and goes pale. He turns on the speaker. Someone is talking slowly, like a mad baby, in the voice of his dad. Everyone is stunned, scared, and puzzled all at the same time. The bravest one of us snaps out of it and takes the phone and shouts at this so-called dad, and the person on the other end hangs up. There's dead silence that washes all over the campsite. Let's call him back to find out where he is and get the phone back, the bravest one suggests again. Nobody really stops him, so he starts dialing. We hear it ringing in the forest. The ringing is coming closer. We get together, grabbing knives and a shovel. We see a shadow standing in the forest. The friend's dad calls out to us. Just comes out and looks just like him, but only he's wearing just a t-shirt and nothing else. It's the t-shirt that was stolen from him. He opens his mouth and there's just a bunch of gibberish that comes out. 
We charge at him, but he runs into the forest screaming like a madman. We decide to stay together, and we follow him. He runs toward an open field with a dead fireplace. Whatever or whoever this is drops the phone and disappears behind some trees. We pick up the phone and we can see shadows coming from his direction. There's eight in total. They're all trying to form words. Now I hear my parents' voice, and fear now just rules all of our minds. We take off running back to camp, we get in our cars, and we hurry the hell out of the forest while calling the police. The police didn't find anything, but my friend's shirt. We talked to our parents about it. They panicked and told us that on some of the many pictures, you can see shades watching us from the woods. They'd also see someone in two places at the same time, although this isn't possible. Until that day, we always put the stories of these doppelgangers up as BS. But now that's changed. Some of us are even in therapy right now, and nobody else believes us. We never went back there after that. So here's one weird tale that I decided to tell about the town that I live in. So I live in Poland, and I live in this crap hole of a city in the north. It's so close to the Russian border that you can go there and back in one day. Kedershin is its name. And if you don't know where that is, it's the place where Hitler almost got killed in his bunker, but the bomb was too far away and it only blew away his pants. The bunker is like 10 or so kilometers away from the city, in a forest, and to this day, the city has a lot of German buildings in it, since it was built by Germans. And there's this giant castle in the city dating back to the 14th century, and it was built by the Kurzusaki Order, I don't know the English name for it, but it was built to keep tabs on and screw around with Poland back then. The old city is really beautiful, but it has some bad history. The old building was taken away by force from Jewish citizens, Bolsheviks who committed over 200 rapes when they took the city during World War II, and massacred nurses in the city hospital. There's a giant and really old Masonic lodge that's not in any use of course now, but it has been turned into a library slash coffee slash restaurant. But back in the 17th to 18th century, it was probably a daily place of meeting for these type of people. All of the Masonic symbols and stuff like that are still all over the place too, and the city can't remove them because it's like historical protection and all that stuff. Basically, the city is very beautiful, but the communistic war crimes, Nazi past, and Masonic stuff makes it having a lot of stories around it. Let's start with the old tank. That's the one my grandpa told me before he died. Rest his soul. In the middle of the city, we have this giant ass lake. It's beautiful and all, but it has a strange story. Basically, there was a tank stuck at the bottom for over 70 years. It ended up being there during World War II, but the driver didn't know where the lake was and he drove right out on the ice. And before he knew it, the tank was in the middle of the lake and the ice started to crack beneath him. The story gets a little foggy here. Some say it's a Russian tank and others say it's a German tank. I never really searched for it, I only heard that it's real. Also, nobody seems to know for sure if the tank driver drowned too. My grandpa used to say that the driver was there and he died too. And I couldn't help every time he told me this story. But to imagine dying like that, just drowning in a tank in ice cold water, this is where the paranormal stuff begins. So, when I was 13 years old, around 2014 or so, and it's the summertime, I'm out on a boat with friends and it's dark, and we decide to go near the lake. It's lit, so we aren't afraid of it, and there's like lots of people around and stuff. So, suddenly, I hear something like a metallic thud coming from the lake. It sounds like metal hitting metal and something is cracking. Literally the sound that would be made by a tank sinking into the lake back then. 
We turn around, my friends and my brother heard it too. Nothing. Nothing. There it is. A weird shape is floating above the water surface. Half of us didn't see it, and I don't know if it's because they don't see well in the dark, or if it was because we just saw what we wanted. But the thing vanishes into thin air. Shortly after we look, it's gone. The sound is gone, too. We're all puzzled, but we just go back to what we were doing. We're a little scared, but nobody wanted to talk about it. I asked my grandpa the next time I saw him, and he told me that he saw it a couple times. He lived around 100 meters or so from the lake, so he often went there for a walk. There was also the case of a drowning. Two people went swimming, they were supposedly drunk, and one, unfortunately, didn't make it back on land. The other one claimed that he saw how the drowning man was screaming that he was being held down and there was like this black figure that was holding his feet and slowly dragging him below the water. The tank was apparently fished out a couple of years ago and I don't really check on the city news ever since I moved out to a different city because I started high school and all that. There was nobody in the tank though, which according to some means there was no ghost in the first place, but personally, myself and a lot of people believed that over 70 years or so the body just simply fell out, and it's probably still there in the water somewhere, cold and haunting. This other story from my city ended up being a little disturbing. As all towns in Poland do, our town also had the town Hobo, this smelly guy, he was mentally unstable type of dude, always talked to himself and went around drunk or screaming at the sky, what have you. Sometimes he assaulted some kids too. It happened to a dude from my class in school when he was 10. The guy apparently tried to stab him. One day I hear that he was arrested, and I ask the person why. They say it's because that he had a dead body in his apartment. And I'm thinking, apartment? How could he afford an apartment? Well, apparently he couldn't. He moved in with his grandfather to help the old man, but the old man passed away one day, and the guy didn't want the authorities to know, so he kept the body in the house and kept taking the money that his granddad was being paid. He was obviously retired. One day, the police knock on the door, they were told there was something smelly in the house, and they knew this hobo was never up to anything very good. They say, hello, whatever his name was, and the man laughs and says hello back. They nervously ask him if they can come in and talk with his grandpa. He laughs again and says yes. He leads them into his room and, oh my god, the body is beyond recognition. It's been a year. The policemen arrest the dude and throw him into a mental hospital. The last time I checked, he was out and he was going around homeless and doing his usual stuff again. The stuff was the biggest news of the city for a solid half a year. I bet you can probably find news articles about it now if you live in the area. And this last story is one that's from the Hitler bunker. So the Hitler bunker is a funny place. You can see all kinds of weird stuff from the 20th century, and you can also learn a lot there. So when I was around 16, my uncle took me and my brother, plus two of my cousins, to the bunker. He had the tickets bought already. We go, and it's still sunny outside. When we arrive, suddenly it becomes cold. Cold like, I mean, really cold. The rubble is super dangerous, but you can go around on your own without any guides. So of course, we just do that and decide to go screw around and go exploring. The cold feeling gets only worse when you get inside the ruins and it doesn't leave you. We were joking to each other about the usual stuff that you would joke about when you're in a Hitler's old bunker, I guess. Just stuff teenagers do. Then we hit the fence and there's no more to go. I wanted to go back to my uncle and younger cousin. But the cousin who was older, and my twin brother who was bigger, told me to stay. They said that we should climb over the fence and see if there are any bunkers out there in the forest. I say that's a stupid idea and I'm going to stay here and wait for them. 
They don't even know how easy it is to step on an old landmine, especially in areas like this, especially areas that are out of the safe area designated by the signs. They climb over the fence anyways, and I just look and watch how they disappear into the forest. And then I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and finally I yell to them, Guys, did you find anything? And silence. So then I yell louder, Hey, did you find anything, or are you guys trying to bang in there? Still, silence. Suddenly, there's movement. I look deep into the forest, and I see something moving. It's a tall figure, dressed in black with a hat. And I think, holy shit, that's a German soldier. But it's odd. The dude is obscenely tall, like unnaturally tall. Like two and a half meters. And it's so dark, even the face is jet black. But the SS clothes are very recognizable. He just stood there, looking into the forest, and then he would look around a little bit. It seems like he didn't notice me, or he couldn't see me. But I'm still standing there, just shitting my pants and looking horrified. This ghost just suddenly walks away and disappears behind some trees. I stay there, just kind of analyzing just what happened. Five minutes later, my brothers are back. They are disappointed because there was only one small bunker with random bottles and just your typical edgy neo-Nazi graffiti in it. I never told them about what I saw, but I don't think they would believe me because they'd probably just think I'm absolutely crazy. So, what did you think of all those stories? Which one was your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to know how to support the channel, I have a Patreon, a PayPal, you can use the Super Thanks button, all kinds of stuff. So, if you have any of your own stories, then you can send them to the email in the description, and I'll read them, and I'll try to get them into a video. So, with that, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you had fun pulling up a stump, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.